Let's talk about this mesh sizing tool real quick. Again, it interactively changes everything. It's uh, the same as the mesh, uh, mesh control size on curve or size on surface. Um, it's actually selecting curves. Um, but we have um, interactive changes. If your auto remesh is enabled, works best with plate meshes, and it also works great with cat, cat meshes. It's not going to work real well with uh, hex mesh because of the way hex meshes have to be mapped out. And the options, uh, you can control the mesh or custom size on curves the same way you can with the mesh control command. And spacing options are available as well if you want to use biasing. So let's take a look at some of that. So a couple of things we have in this mesh sizing tool. Uh, increase, decrease, set two, and set spacing options. So we're going to take a look at those. If we wanted to match mesh on curves, we could simply select a curve to match and then select a curve that we wanted to have the same mesh size. Same thing with nodes. But uh, we're going to focus right here on the size curves uh, for a couple of minutes. A couple of things to note, we did map mesh these, these surfaces. So if we have this propagate by mapped approach turned on and we update the mesh size, you see it updates all the way around our mapping. Okay, increase, decrease, um, as the names imply there, or set two. So I don't know, I've got 17 elements on one and 12 on the other. Let's just assume I wanted 16 on both. And it will, again, propagate the mapped approach for us and uh, remesh our surfaces. Again, if you have, uh, if you're updating mesh and you want to see the free edges as they're generated, you know, you can click this show free edge uh, button and it will uh, let you know where, if any place, your mesh is not matched up well. Okay, I'm going to turn that select off here, the control G to regenerate my screen. Let's see what else we're going to talk about with the mesh, uh, the uh, map. Uh, or the mesh sizing tool. All right, match curves or nodes. We just talked about it. You can select, make a selection of one or more curves and nodes we matched on another curve. So again, works well for matching a selection of shorter curves onto a longer curve. Um, okay, spacing options. Let's take a look at that for a minute. And let's go to uh, this model right here and let's delete some mesh. And what I want to do is just mesh this surface. And we're going to go back to the mesh sizing tool. And we're going to say set spacing options. And the spacing is default by default equal. But we can bias using a pick location. What I'm going to do is set a high bias factor so that we can look at this. Length based, propagate by mapped approach. That's all on show free edges. We don't have to worry about right now. Increase, decrease, and set two. So I'm going to increase by one and, and just set a bias factor of four. Um, bias using pick location. So if I grab there, Okay, so we see that it biases the elements based on where I picked. Okay, so it's biased by selecting pick location in the middle. Let's go back to uh, equal length for a second. We get, uh, get our mesh fixed back up. 
couple other biasing options, small elements at the ends or center. Um, pretty much the same way in the mesh uh, surface tool or the mesh mesh control size on curve tool that we would use to uh, bias our mesh sizing on curves. So if you went into this command, selected a curve and wanted to bias it, these are the same commands you would get. So we could bias small elements at ends, small elements at center. And then it propagates our mapped approach for us. So again, the bias commands allow us to place a denser mesh at one end or the center or a pick location of a curve. 